Well, hello, Pray and Share Warriors. How are y'all doing tonight? I'm trying to get my camera. You can see I have my cat behind me. This is Gracie. Gracie's quite. I'm afraid she's going to attack me. She looks like she might be in attack mode. <laughs> All right. Well, this is Gracie. This is Gracie. I've been inviting her. I can't get my chair moved. There we go, Gracie. All right, Gracie. You don't have to look at the camera. Maybe the camera might hurt her eyes. Okay. All right. Well, I hope you had an awesome Friday. It's an awesome Friday for me. Uh oh, she's a leaving. Are you leaving or just changing positions? All right, she really wants what she really wants. What would make Gracie really happy is for me to give her this chair, <laughs> but it's not going to happen. You get Gracie in here too. Okay. Well, anyway. So I'm going to share some testimony with you tonight. All right, eight pages of huge writing. I did this on my phone and then I printed it off. I actually shared it with our Sunday school class Sunday before last. I just wanted to record it. I have done lots of testimonies in the past and like I explained to our class, I really need to do it in several, several different segments because it's so long when you get old you have a lot of testimony and I'm old anyway let's pray we're not going to do any psalms we're just going to do that and I'm going to read to you um, what I shared on Facebook this morning and then I'm going to get off of here I'm not going to be on here very long I know I advertised I was doing it this at eight and then I went and ate dinner and I go, oh, I'm just going to do this at 730. So I changed it. That way I can get in there and I can get Seth something to eat soon. All right. Well, let's pray. God, we just come to you and we just thank you. We thank you for all that you are and for all that you do. God, you are on your throne and you are in control. You are the great I am. You are the great Jehovah. You are from everlasting to everlasting, and you will always be God. Thank you for being our creator, our sustainer, our protector, our provider, our shelter in the storm, our strength and our refuge. God, you are mighty and magnificent and uh, miraculous and powerful. And you are the righteous judge, God, that will judge all unrighteousness. You are also kind and compassionate and caring and loving. And you are faithful. You are trustworthy. And you are patient, God. You want none to perish. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for calling us as your children. We love you with our whole heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. And God, we pray for the lost. We just pray, God, that you would open their eyes, their ears, and their hearts to the truth, God, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so they could be saved. And we pray for the prodigals, God. We just pray for them to remember the relationship they had with you, to return, to repent, and to be reconciled. God, we pray for all the disasters that are going on right now. Just so many volcano eruptions and earthquakes um, famines, floods, storms, all kinds of things. God, we just pray for these people that are in the midst of these disasters, God, that you would protect them, that their needs would be met with the hands and feet of Jesus, the loving compassion of Jesus in the arms of Jesus, God, that they would uh, feel your presence in their time of need. God, we just pray for, um, we pray for truth, God. We just pray for truth to rise above all the lies that we have been told 
God, for your truth to reign, for you to give us strength to stand on your truths. God, we just pray for all the people that have lost loved ones. We just pray for peace, comfort, and strength for them. And we also pray for all the sick people, God. We just pray for healing for them. There's so many people that still have COVID. There's so many people that have other ailments, that have cancer, God. We just pray for healing. We just pray that they would feel your presence in their time of sickness, God, and that you would give their family strength. And in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. All right. Well, Gracie is still here. Yeah, pretty girl. Isn't she beautiful? Let me tell you some testimony about Gracie. Well, I had a cat. I had a cat named Kitty, and I had Kitty for 13 and a half years. And Kitty died. I don't know what Kitty died of, but when I buried Kitty, I buried part of myself in my backyard. So for four years, I didn't have a cat, and I really missed that companionship because when everybody is gone from my house, Gracie is here, and I talk to Gracie constantly. She is my constant um, animal that I talk to. And uh, so I went to a YEC with our youth. And the man was praying about bondage. And I'd been thinking about, is it time that I get another cat? And I wasn't sure if I was ready yet for another cat. But while this man was praying about bondage, about he was praying about human trafficking is what he was praying about. I had this image of this cat, this kitten, pop into my head that was tied on a leash, tied on a blue leash, and it was gray, just like this one, just like Gracie. And so after I had that image, I uh, went and bought cat litter in a cat box. I said, well, it can't hurt. Maybe eventually I'll get a cat. Well, then I saw on Facebook that this lady had this gray kitten. And she had found it. She had rescued it. And she had found it. But she couldn't keep it because she had a dog. And her dog wanted to eat it. So... I went to Walnut Springs, where, which is where I used to live, and I brought Gracie home. And Gracie hated us the first night. She slept behind the refrigerator all night. Then Gracie got hungry, and she came out, and I fed her. And we've been, we've been family ever since. But anyway, that's, that's how God works in my life. He brings me flash images. I, I can just share so many stories, so many dreams, but that's just one. It's a little bit of testimony about Gracie, which I didn't even cover in my testimony. So I'm going to start on my testimony, and it's eight pages, but look how big the font is. I could probably just let you read it yourself. <laughs> okay, so every year, this is a little bit of maybe explaining myself. Every year I pick three words and they're my focal words. They're the words that I work on all year. I don't do um I, can't, I don't do resolutions. I do three words and I try to focus on them. So this year I chose presence and I chose testify and I chose encourage. And so this year, I have wanted to be more in the presence of God. I have been called to testify about the good things that God has done in my life and to encourage others. Okay, so maybe this will be an encouragement. So this is my testimony from death to life, from rebelling against God to drawing as near as I can. That's where I am. Right now, I am drawing as near as I can. This is what I see clearly today. God put each one of us here on this earth to, number one, 
learn to love him with our whole heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. Number two, accept his son as our savior and love others, no matter who they are or what they do. He calls us to be the hands and feet of Jesus, the love and compassion of Jesus, and, sorry, this paper is very thin. They don't make copy paper as thick as they used to. And forgive others also to repent of our sins too. I am blessed to have been raised in a Christian home with my sweet mama as my spiritual leader in our home. So I've always had the basis and foundation for my Christianity journey. But when my daddy died when I was 15, I got angry and I rebelled against God. I thought I got saved when I was 16 at my old church at a revival but I didn't get saved at all because it didn't change my heart. I was still rebelling against God and I was still angry with God. And so that was not a real Christianity conversion at all. Even in my rebellious years of using alcohol as an escape for nine years, God protected me so many times. I was angry, but I never doubted he was there. I never doubted who God was, but I was angry at him. And I felt like I had the right to be angry at him at 15, 16, 17. My not following God found me with in a relationship where that wasn't God's choice for me. So when I got pregnant with our daughter, uh, when I was 24, I quit drinking. I just, I just quit because I wanted a better life for her. And, uh, but I never was an alcoholic. I never was. I mostly used alcohol as an escape because I wasn't happy and I was mad at God. So God started drawing me back to him at this time. A few years later, after being challenged at my old church to read the Bible cover to cover through God's word, I started reading the Bible again every night and praying. I had, had my own quiet time. So God was healing my heart and preparing me for heartbreak to come. I do believe that God chooses us as his children and prepares the way of our journey with him, Jesus and the Holy Spirit. So my divorce was my next heartbreak, but through the ultimate brokenness that I felt, I truly got saved right at my home church that I go to now, Walnut Springs Baptist Church. I got saved under the tabernacle that we just tore down the other day um, at another revival. So in June, I got baptized, but I became a member of my church on May the 14th of 1991. That is when I got, I got saved. I didn't get baptized the same night. It was June 8th. So my Christianity journey was now ahead of me. And wow, has it been a journey of valleys facing impossible mountains, but I have never felt alone in any of these times. Where's my cat going? You can't get comfy, Gracie. Jesus gave me the strength to be a single mom for nine years. And I was a single mom for nine years, and I, I worked a lot of times two jobs. Because it's not easy to be a single mom. So if there are any single moms out there, I get it. It's hard. It's a hard job. But Jesus has shown me miracles in the valleys and has been with me to praise God on the mountains. He has. He has never left me alone. So God delivered my husband that I have now, Ricky, to my front door when I wanted absolutely nothing to do with men in general. 
that I had made a list for the future of who I saw myself being with, who I thought God wanted for me. And he brought me my soulmate, and together we have faced many valleys and mountains together. So I'm thankful and grateful right now, more than any other time of my life, for all the blessings of family and friends, church family and prayer warriors God has placed in my life. My daughter is a beautiful woman that is hardworking and successful with her dance studio. She blessed me with my first granddaughter, Kylie, and when she married God's choice for her, my favorite son-in-law, Ricky, I got blessed with another granddaughter, Maddie, and grandson, August. The hardest part of being a parent to an adult is seeing them on their own Christianity journey, knowing just like yourself, mistakes will be made, but always knowing Jesus will be with them. It is a blessing and also challenging to have a Down syndrome son. But I am never alone there either. God brings me the best ideas for Seth's education and for his care. Seth brings me joy and laughter every day. We have so many seasons as Christians that we walk through, bad or good. I am thankful for each season I have learned more in the valleys with Jesus than on the mountains. Jesus is our only path back to God. He knows the way and we do not. So we need to stay close to the shepherd as we are on this journey. He wants to help us find the way. When we stray, and we do stray, he will come and get us, protect us, and provide for us too. Keep following Jesus. He is the only one that knows what is ahead. He is. He's the only one that knows what is ahead. In conclusion, life is short, so love God. Accept Jesus as your Savior. Trust God on your journey. Stand in obedience to his word. Serve God with your gifts and testi testify about all the awesome things God has done in your life. Also, try to walk in the Spirit and in faith each day. Okay, well, I probably could have rewritten this, and I might have changed some things, but this is exactly what I read. It's exactly what I read, and Gracie's gone. I guess Gracie was in, intended to be part of my testimony. All right. Well, if you have any testimony, if you have experienced any miracles, I have experienced a lot of miracles. But I just wanted to do a short overview, and I don't know how long that took. I felt bad because it was eight pages on my phone that I read. And it was eight pages. I really think it would probably fit on four in a smaller font, but anyway, okay, now I can move my chair freely. I thought she might attack me. I didn't know. She's not real happy with me right now. So anyway, I believe that God wants us to share our testimony, and he shared with me this morning to share my testimony, and you wonder, where have I been for the past four days? Uh, her past three days. Let's see. Tuesday. Tuesday was a really hard day for me. I had a hard time just unwinding from Tuesday. And then Wednesday, I was at youth. Last night, my stomach was hurting a little bit. And so I was kind of afraid that I just needed to not be live because I thought that I might be getting sick. I didn't know. Feel better today. So God told me to do my testimony today. So I'm caught up, and I'm going to read to you what I wrote on Facebook. And I may read, I don't know, I may read something out of the Bible. I'm not sure. What psalm are we up to? 29? I don't know. I may read something from today. 
I may read. I don't know what I'm going to do. Okay, let me read this. What a beautiful song and message by Brandon Lake and Bethel Music. I love the lyrics and how he started this song with scripture in Romans. And I wish I knew. I know it's Romans something. I don't know. It's about being a living sacrifice. Maybe I can find it. I have a pretty good index here. All right, we'll see if we can find that. Um, we are to be a living sacrifice for God who gave us life for his plan and purpose. What would happen if all of the church lived like this? What would happen if we all lived like that? If we all lived for God and not ourselves? We all sacrificed things that we wanted or things that we wanted to do for his glory. So we are to bring him all of our glory, honor, and praise. What would happen if all the church lived like this? We would love more. We would care more. We would help more. We would pray more. We would start a Jesus movement that could not be stopped. When I say we, I'm including myself. So don't ever take this writing as I think that I'm better because I'm not. I'm including me and we. Uh, I see clearly where we are in God's timeline. God's timeline. God's timeline. I don't know. I wanted to say lighting. God's timeline. I see where we are. We are at the great falling away. We are where many, many, even Christians are falling away from the faith. The tickling of itching ears. We are in that time too. We are at, but we are at the great spiritual awakening. We are so much at the great spiritual awakening now. Also, which is so exciting to see. My daily verse in new version is Revelation 4. The description of the throne of God. I believe it will be so awesome that we will be on our faces before our holy God. I really do. I believe that we are going to be so blown away. We're going to be so blown away that we are going to be on our faces. America needs Jesus. Everyone needs Jesus. Jesus sacrificed himself for everyone in this world. Come just as you are. Admit that you are a sinner. Ask for forgiveness. Believe that Jesus is God's one and only son that came to save the world through his death, burial, and resurrection. Confess Jesus as your Savior and Lord of your life. Invite him into your heart. Isaiah 43, 18 through 19. Leave the old, receive the new. Okay, now I'm going to see if I can find living sacrifice in here. It's in Romans. I don't see it. Sacrifice. I don't see that. Let's see if maybe it's in living. Living. Nope, I can't find it. We'll see if the Holy Spirit will lead me to it. I just turned to Romans. Sometimes that happens. So bear with me. I'm sorry. I should be more uh, prepared, but I'm not.
And you probably know exactly where it is. But, I, ah, here we are. Romans 12. Holy Spirit, pull me through again. Okay. Plus, it has living sacrifices to God. Romans 12. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed. This is a good one, too. To this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Serve God with spiritual gifts, for I say through the grace given to me to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function, so we being many are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. If prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion uh, to our faith. Or ministry, let us use it in our ministering. He who teaches in teaching, he who exhorts in exhortation, he who gives with liberality, he who leads with diligence, he who shows mercy and cheerfulness. Behave like a Christian. Let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love in honor giving preference to one another. Not lagging in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing steadfastly in prayer, distributing to the needs of the saints, giving to hospitality, bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse, rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep, be of the same mind toward one another. Do not set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own opinion. Repay no one evil for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. If it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably um, with all men. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. Therefore, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him a drink. So, For so in doing, you will heap coals of fire on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. So we are to... We are to care for our enemies. We are to feed them if they're hungry, give them a drink if they're thirsty. That is what we are called to do. We are not to conform to the ways of the world. We are to be a living sacrifice. And we are to... I live for an audience of one. And a lot of people don't agree with everything that I say or do. And that's okay. Because I am not going to stand before anyone else but God. When all this is over with, I am going to stand before him. So in all that I do, I want to be obedient to what he's called me to do. And that's why I do this. Because he called me to this. And I am not super obedient. As you can tell, I missed three nights in a row. But I try to be consistent. Sometimes I'm not. Sometimes I'm not here. I'm never here on Wednesday night. And sometimes I have meetings too on other nights that I have to go to. So anyway, let's see how... 
we are going to share salvation. I kind of like this one. Steps to peace with God. We need to follow. We need to follow. Most people have an idea what they believe it will take to be accepted by God. After all, who likes the idea of exiting this life without being on good terms with him? Thankfully, it's impossible to be certain that you have made peace with God. But the way must be chosen during this life. We have to choose during this life. This is our life to choose. This is the life that he's given us to choose. Here are the steps drawn from God's book, the Bible. Step one, understand God's purposes, peace and eternal life. God loves you and wants you to experience peace and eternal fulfilling life. The Bible says we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 5, 1. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. John 3, 16. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. John 10, 10. Why don't most people have this peace in the fulfilling, abundant life that God intended for us to have? Well, step two, admit the problem, our sin and separation. God did not create us like robots to automatically love and mechanically obey him. God gave us a will and the, and the freedom to choose. The first man and woman chose to disobey. Adam and Eve, they chose to disobey. God, to disobey God and to go their own willful way. And we still make that choice today. This results in separation from God. The Bible says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23 For the wages of sin is death. Romans 6.23 People have tried many ways to bridge this gap between themselves and God. The Bible says, There is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way to death. Proverbs 14, 12. Your iniquities have made a separation between you and your God. Isaiah 59, 2. No bridge reaches God except one. So step three, discover God's bridge, the cross. Jesus Christ died on the cross and rose from the grave. Though he was God's sinless son, he became a human, took our place, and paid the penalty for our sin, bridging the gap between God and us. The Bible says, for there is one God and there is one mediator between God and men the man Jesus Christ. 1 Timothy 2.5 Christ suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God. 1 Peter 3.18 God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 5, 8, and Romans 6, 23. Christ died for our sins. He was buried. He was raised on the third day. 1 Corinthians 15, 3 through 4. God has provided the only way to forgiveness of sin and eternal life, but each person must make a choice. So step four, embrace the truth, receive Christ. We must trust Jesus Christ as our Savior and receive him by personal choice. Jesus says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him, and he with me. Revelation 3.20 I 
I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John 14, 6. The Bible says to all, to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. John 1, 12. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. John 3, 36. So what is your decision? Will you receive Jesus Christ right now in trust in him alone for forgiveness and eternal life? The Bible says that's the only way to find peace with God. So this is how we do this. We admit, admit your need, that you are a sinner in need of God's forgiveness. Be willing to turn from trusting in anything else for eternal life and trust only in Christ. Believe that Jesus Christ died for you on the cross and came back to life from the grave and is your only way to heaven. Accept Jesus' offer to forgive your sins and come into your life as your Savior. You want to tell him in words like these. Dear Jesus, thank you for making it possible for me to find peace with God. I believe that when you died, you were, you were paying the penalty for my sins. I now receive you into my life as my Savior. So I can have forgiveness and never-ending life from God. Thank you for your gift of eternal life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And this was crossway.org. I did not write this. Crossway.org. This is their track. Um, if you did receive Jesus as your Savior, then welcome to the kingdom family of God. The angels are rejoicing. And your name is being written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Now, I talked to you tonight about Christianity journey, my Christianity journey. Not all of it, just part of it. Um, if you want to grow closer in a relationship with God, then read his word. Just like we, wrote, we read Romans 12 tonight. We read all of it. Read God's word, pray, pray every day and find you some music and praise. Praise God every day. Bring him all your glory, honor and praise. Let your life be a living sacrifice for his kingdom. And so in my testimony, um, I have a daughter that's 36. She's very successful at her business. She's a very loving mother. I didn't add that to the testimony. Um, she's supplied me with three beautiful grandchildren. And she is married to a good man. They work hard for everything that they have. I'm very proud of both of them. I just wanted to add that. And... Uh, she is the best gift that I received from my former marriage. And we are really good friends. We had some struggles when she's a teenager. That's normal. But as adults, we get along very well. All right. Well, it is time for me to go. It's time for me to bless, give you God's blessing. I can't bless anybody, but I can read God's blessing to you, and God will bless you.
uh, numbers. I started to say Romans. Numbers 6, 24 through 26. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. We can all use some peace. I'm going to do a generic prayer for family and friends. Anybody that comes here, a blessing. Um, anyway, do put anything in the comments that you would like. Do put um, scripture that you like. Uh, share a miracle, a miraculous story with me. Share me, share with, <laughs> I cannot speak tonight. Share with me some of your testimony. I'll be glad to read it. All right. Well, let's pray. God, we just thank you for all the many things that you have done for us, God. We just praise you. We bring you all of our glory, honor, and praise. Help us to make our lives a living sacrifice to you, God, that pleases you. Help us to be obedient to you. Help us to be bold in sharing your truths and sharing the gospel of Jesus. I just pray that you would bless anyone that comes here and bless their family too. God, just bless them abundantly. Any of my friends and family, God, I just pray for blessings and protection and provision that you would lead God and guard and and be with them, that they would feel your presence, God. I just pray again for the lost God. And I pray that you would give us boldness to go out and share the gospel of Jesus. You would help us to be the hands and feet of Jesus, the loving compassion of Jesus. God, that you would just help us to be who you want us to be, that we would trust you in your plan and purpose for our lives. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, my pray and share warriors, it is time for me to go. I hope you have an awesome rest of your evening and an awesome Saturday. I'm thinking about going out to eat breakfast tomorrow. I don't ever eat breakfast. I do every once in a while. I'm thinking that it might be a good breakfast day tomorrow. Or, I don't know. I may just be here in my jammies. I don't know. I am hard to figure out. Sometimes it depends on how much sleep I have. Whether I feel like I have allergy things going on. Anyway. Much love. I will be here tomorrow night, though, unless something comes up. Much love. And cyber hugs. Till I see you again. Good night.